What's up, everybody? It is me, King Alpha. Hope everybody's doing great. So, we do have a new patch coming tomorrow as Season 8 is starting up. So, I'm very excited to basically go over in depth basically some of the big things that are going to be changed in the beginning of Season 8. Um, now, I'm not going to go over like the little things, like for example, the pike skills and everything. And so, if you guys do want to look at that, I'll put the link in the description here so you guys can read all the patch notes yourselves, or if there was something that I scrolled over too fast that you really wanted to see for yourself as well. Um, if you guys don't mind, I will be streaming extremely early tomorrow when the patch does drop. So I'll be streaming at 8 a.m. if you're Eastern time. Um, if you're West, if you're West Coast, basically it'll be at 5 a.m. And then if you're in uh, CEST, basically in the UK, Europe, and everything, it should be at 1 p.m. your time that um, it starts. I know some people go off the 24-hour clock, but I don't. So, <laughs> um, but anyways, let's go over some of the other things. So. As we can see, the new units are coming out, so they do always have the 50% reduction in terms of their resupply cost, and they always have minus 10 leadership cost as well. Now, I know in the actual BTR, it said minus 15, so um, I guess that was just a localization thing or something, but yeah, it's minus 10, not minus 15, it seems. Uh, we also have all the new challenges that are going to be coming out, so... <clears throat> basically the pike class and everything in terms of the unit the battle pass all that type of stuff uh we also have the new region the bandits uh bandit raids which is basically fief raids but now it's bandit raids which is awesome and the fame store and garrison quarter store is basically coming back so really nice to see that they're going to continuously keep that store in definitely gives players a lot of rewards and is a really nice rewarding thing for playing the game making sure that you're playing like pve with your friends but also grinding the uh like certain parts of the season basically so let's get into this so pike class is not i'm not going to go over the pike class like i said um in terms of like all the mechanics and everything uh they did say exactly when the units will be available so the gray hair garrison actually comes out july 19th which is really interesting because that's actually the last day of twitch drops which is pretty sad but i guess you know it is what it is and then in terms of the mo dao battalion um, it says to be announced, which is actually pretty interesting because in the PTR it said 40 days, um, which to be honest, it's a, it's that is a very long time. But, you know, I guess it is what it is. We'll just have to wait and see what happens with these guys. Um, we do have the new unit challenge improvements, so it's actually going to be pretty crazy. So I think for all seasonal challenges, um, it says basically they're all unified so you can you only need to complete some of the challenges each stage so for example six out of eight eight out of ten this removes the requirement of completing all challenges so this is actually really nice in terms of you know for players that need to catch up or for players that are getting into the game that want to get all the units and everything it is really really nice so definitely you know keep in, in mind that and i believe as well season four is going to be reduced so keep you know keep that in mind as well Next, we have the Fame Store. So, the Fame Store, um, I do have a little video of it. I will probably do a video by itself of what's exactly in the Fame Store. It is definitely a bit different than last season, um, and I think some of the rewards are a bit better. But, however, I do want to say the new skin that's coming in, um, in terms of the Fame Store, I'm not particularly happy with it. I think it's just the color compared to what is actually the level 100 skin. Um, and then there's no map and you know if you don't if you didn't really customize the face of your character it's gonna basically look crap um basically all the same ways of, of getting your fame as well donations daily quests story quests bandit raids and then also doing the lin Wu fortress so that's gonna uh, it's actually gonna be released later in the season so it's gonna kind of be like um fjord but just different this time so basically just a different map um we got the campaign here if you guys are interested in that definitely read that i'm personally just gonna scroll over it <clears throat> they did do something with the the world map now so now you can see when your allies are all running to a city so in terms of like um like to reduce communication in terms of like alliances you can see if your alliance is basically coming which is pretty nice but i think it's gonna get a bit crowded and i hope it doesn't like mess up fps or something in terms of or like the servers because obviously you're gonna be having a lot of lines going so we do have seasonal ruins so this is very much changed which is the big part here so now you're able to uh, equip runes on your hands and boots however weapon rune energy has now 
capped at five instead of six and then the armor rune energy is now capped at three compared to six so even though you're able to put more runes on you're basically losing some of maybe the strong bonuses that you can get with adding in maybe two like two like sorry three of the two um rune powers compared to now you're gonna if you want to put a good setup on your armor you're gonna maybe only do one that's gonna be like a level two and then a level one and things like that but i will say i will go over all the seasonal runes seasonal runes are pretty strong this season definitely a lot of them have changed and some of them that were at the end of the season level of like 50 have now been like all the way back to like level five of the season level so it's it's pretty pretty interesting um however they did make a change to the seasonal store as well they cho they chose to take out the choice of weapon schematic battle relic gold dust honor reset tokens personal history and unit medals and basically put them in the free track in the battle so basically like the conqueror's path which i'm not sure exactly what the conqueror's path is unless i'm just being dumb and it could be the f4 quest but you know if you guys want to correct me on that go ahead <laughs> um obviously the antique store is coming back so in case you guys do want to check that out i'll be doing a video of all the skins um that are basically going to be coming out as well they did make a change to auxiliaries this time and i'm trying to confirm in terms of uh someone else as well because i know some people have auxiliaries of like for example flamethrowers but they don't have them ex you know exactly unlocked will they lose the auxiliaries um that you know you have maxed out and leveled up so definitely but they did say they're basically going to be compensating um any auxiliaries that have any type of uh more or less like levels and everything like that so we'll definitely see if it in terms of only seasonal levels or whether it's just the unit tree uh units however for the auxiliaries now what they are doing is that they're going to be giving you these uh like leveled up auxiliaries however they're going to actually come with doctrines themselves which is really nice because if you think about it when you first get into the game you get these new units but they start off at level one they're really you know not good and they're you know yeah they're a purple unit but they have no doctrines and everything they're not leveled up and all that type of stuff so it is really nice that they now are giving you basically um the units and they are putting in seasonal units as well it's not just simple units um in terms of like all unit tree units so now you guys can actually you know give them a try in terms of like okay paladins are they really worth it for me do i really like their play style you play with them and then say you know what i'm gonna go and i'm gonna grind the paladin challenge in season five so i do like this a lot um there's some cohort thing here but i'm not gonna really but you know go over that um they do have something new for the houses leaving alliances mid you know season or like midweek uh basically you can't join another alliance for about 72 hours which is you know i mean if the if you time it right you can uh basically join another alliance before the next tw so yeah uh in terms of some of the other stuff i'm not going to really go over in terms of world map changes cross region tokens and everything um and the whole uh open world type of stuff like maps being reduced and all that type of stuff i'm they're, they're not as important but they're still like something really cool um i will say this guys they did finally bring this back in terms of um the death information which is actually really sad because Caden and Gerald are now not part of the community anymore so I mean they're part of it but they're not you know they're they're on to new things so very you know interesting to see that they basically like put like a little I guess easter egg here or something or like a farewell to these guys but it is really nice that they are now putting this back because it's always interesting to see you know what did the most damage to me because if someone's old did that much damage or what did i get one shotted by you can actually see the damage again they did have this previously and then they took it out because i think it was getting really buggy or something now as well guys this is something really really big crafting and everything has been changed immensely it's it's ridiculous so to improve the overall gameplay they're changing the attributes for crafted armor helmets uh you know all the four pieces basically have increased chance of gaining multiple attributes when crafting it will now be easier to craft with crit rate anti-crit rate and leadership leadership is one of the 
biggest things here because of the fact that and crit as well because crit and, and leadership is is everything somebody's looking for so if you're crafting unbound items and you craft leadership on it and it gives you 20 something you're basically going to be able to get loads of silver for it and everything so <clears throat> definitely keep out for that now as well they are changing the hero material changes so they're doing some big hero material changes so now you can get powdered silver rivets superior steel and and leather basically from the apothecary limited per week to 30 per week 60 60 60 and for using bronze so they're basically trying to get players to basically use their bronze a bit more 30 powder 30 uh, powdered silver per week as well is really good because you can craft a weapon craft an arm craft a couple armor pieces or whatever as well so we have this big thing they are now converting a lot of the previous materials into just two materials which is really nice i think personally for me because you know it, my storage is basically stocked up of, of all of five materials where now it's just steel ignite and roll of leather which is really nice personally and i do really do appreciate it they are changing the skill pages now for all weapons so now all of the skill pages are going to be in one so you don't have to be like oh i want you know this skill page this skill page this skill page for uh dual blade and, and keep going back and forth so this is really nice one thing i don't like is the fact that they did increase the they said drop rates for some doctrines have been updated but then they didn't say exactly what was updated which was kind of annoying um the epic mobility doctrine can now be gained from treaties which i thought it was before but i guess not um i could be wrong here but i swear it was um and then they added some system changes and now we're going to go into the warlord balancing and optimization so muskets liquid fire hitbox has been changed from uh 2.5 meters to 2 meters so We'll, we'll see. Hopefully Musket isn't broken this season <laughs> in terms of like last season, how Musket was in the beginning. Uh, they also did change dual blades. So the Great Thunderbolt, you know, you can no longer uh, hold it down while moving. You basically have to hold down while moving and then use the left button to use it. So I don't know. I don't really play dual blades and I don't see a lot of dual blades using Great Thunderbolt that much. So, yeah. <clears throat> also the basic attack each basic attack phase has had its damage multiplier reduced by 20 percent. so i think that's a really big thing for dual blades because they rely on speed and multiple attacks all at once when you're doing a basically combo and everything so gonna be pretty big for dual blades i want to see what's gonna happen they do have some decent um runes as well the now we're gonna go over to glaive the glaive has a basic attack uh buff which was a block break of the basic attack has been increased uh which is pretty good because the um so typically when you do the sprint um hit it's actually really nice and it gives you like that nice animation to hit players from a long distance as well um and they also have the arc of steel buff as well which the arc of steel uh block break of it has been increased and they reduced the cooldown by four seconds so it's not bad weapon dance poleaxes weapon dance hitbox has been changed from three meters to two meters which um personally yeah, i mean i don't really hit players with it all the time but I think they did remove the rune for weapon dance this season, so you're probably not going to be seeing a lot of poleaxes use weapon dance. In in some senses, I think you still will. Um, Maul did get a buff in terms of Forge of War, so they left this little typo here. But basically, Forge of War has been increased by 50% of base blunt, uh, base blunt plus 428. By basically, their damage has been in increased by 50%. Um, with by 420 428 points i can't talk oh my god um the unit balancing and optimization this is really interesting i really don't understand this but iron cat bow riders have now have a new skill which uh, is called hurdle greatly increases movement speed and they also have another new skill which is combo shot to increase rate of fire enabling you to shoot a ton of arrows in a short amount of time um they also have a new passive bedevil when attacking reduces the enemy's piercing defense and can stack up five times upon reaching five stacks it causes the enemy to lose health and inflicts days so this is really interesting because iron cat bow riders are level are like green units and 
I mean, is this going to be the new unit that everybody sallies out with and be and, and is really annoying on defense or or what? It's going to be very interesting to see this personally. Um, and Perfection Guards also did get a big buff as well. They improved their charge skill, tuning its speed and hitbox. Um, a new massive, uh, I mean, sorry, a new uh, passive, so three battles, boosted their charge and will now launch a series of attacks together following a, the charge. So it's really, really good. I'm really, really proud out of that which is really nice um because i mean they're a really good unit but you know regardless i think sometimes you want to switch it up from using condos and all those type of units where now you can use the new and improved um perfection pikemen so i wonder if these guys will place the land uh, will replace the lance nets but we'll have to see um, there's some bug fixes here and everything, um, and then the weapon crafting formula has changed a lot. Now, in terms, I wish they kind of did it here where you can see uh, more or less like, sorry to say, like more or less like if you could see like all the, the if they did it by like rarities, that would be nice. But like, for example, we can see here that the, um, the burner here is like 80 uh roll of leather and 85 and then the powdered silver so most of it has basically stayed the same i think some of the armor customization has changed like some of the armor cost has changed but i'm not entirely sure it's gonna have to be something that i definitely check out and you know when the update comes out but basically that is it guys so big things in terms of the armor being um you know crafting being changed the weapons like some of the the hero classes being updated a little bit as well and then obviously new pike class also i forgot to say this as well i'm very sorry they changed how mvp algorithm is basically going to work the final score is basically going to work so they said increased maximum score that can be gained for damage taken in standard battles as a warlord takes more damage battle the rate at which their score is reduced is also decreased um and the MVP algorithm has been changed. MVP will now better reflect the Warlord's overall performance. Now it takes into account occupying objectives, taking less damage, destroying large artilleries, will increase the likelihood of earning the match's MVP. So this is pretty good. I mean, in terms of, I wonder, they don't really talk about here in terms of like how much the units really affect MVP as well. Because I know, for example, some people get... 200 and something unit kills but then they're not mvp because of the fact that they didn't take a lot of damage because they are like a short bow or something like that um so i wonder what's gonna really happen with that so we'll have to see but i hope you guys did enjoy this patch notes um basically update hope you guys are ready for tomorrow because i'm going to be streaming it and i'll be catching you guys all later deuces deuces dishes have a good one and just have a great night <laughs>